Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. I'm so glad you're here. You guys, I have so enjoyed this um, re-exploring of the South Africa debacle. Every time I think it can't get more nuts, it does. And so today I wanted to talk about the fire. I'm being very dramatic because I personally don't believe that a fire happened. And I'm going to show you why because it didn't happen. <laughs> you guys, I have so much to talk about with you. Today's going to be a good one. We're going to talk about that <clears throat> fire um, that uh, that she's claimed. And uh, and also, I have HG Tutor on the end of this one. Now, this is from our interview over on his channel, but he actually went into his theory as to why she makes up such things. Hint, it has to do with her narcissism. So I think you're going to enjoy this episode. I'm so glad you're here. Now let's get into this. I'm Jen, everyone. Thanks for being here. Hong Kong. So in case you missed the other videos, I've explained repeatedly that what got me interested in Harry and Meghan and paying closer attention is this interview here in South Africa, this trip to South Africa, 2019. I've definitely done these other videos on it. Go watch it. I explain a lot more detail about all of it. Well, Part of it that came out after the fact, and I want to put an emphasis and underline that point, it came out way after the fact, three years to be exact, is that there was a fire in Archie's nursery. Okay. But then it came out, no, 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 no. It, that's not what happened. According to the articles that I could find, it was a heater that was smoking, that was unplugged and dealt with. They believe that it was the wrong, whatever it was, voltage, wattage, whatever the word is. Um, but nothing actually happened. Now, I want to remind you all, as I've pointed out, this is the same place where she referred it to as a housing unit, not the mansion that the, it literally has in its title. It's the commissioner's mansion. She called it a housing unit. So already insulting. And then Three years later, on her Archita, oh God, that podcast. This is the episode I actually listened to. This is one uh, with Serena Williams, and she wouldn't stop talking. Made it all about herself. Nothing shocking about that. And uh, goes into this nonsensical story. Okay, now I would like to point out a couple of things. The fire supposedly happened in 2019. She talked about it on her podcast. I have the date here. It would have been oh, actually, it's four years later, August 23rd. 2022. So she didn't mention this in the Netflix show or the countless other interviews, anything like that that she did. She waited until she needed a story for her podcast. I want to drive po this point home is how horrible they behaved on this trip from start to finish. Again, the purpose of which was to put a spotlight on causes that could use more global attention. That's what the royal tours are meant to do. That's not what they did. They put the spotlight on themselves and made themselves the biggest victims. In my opinion, it was to set the stage so they could show why they'd be moving to California right, for their private life. But think about it. We just came off this video where I saw her being one of the, I, it's one of the most rude things I've ever seen. And that's saying something because she does tons of rude stuff. But I'm, I'm begging you, if you haven't seen this video, go watch it. It's important. Spread this around. Share it with everybody. Tell them to come watch. Because you really got a glimpse of how out of control her ego is and was on this trip. And again, remains to be. And then we had that interview where again, steps away from women's shelter and, and children's shelter, making it about herself. It's so crazy. And then <clears throat> again, I'm stuck on this housing unit thing. And then three, I keep saying three, four years later, decides all of a sudden, oh no, there was also a fire in the nursery. So people were outraged, rightly so, about this. Pointing out, like, this, these are tweets from actual people in South Africa saying, oh, we're so poor, we don't have smoke detectors. Oh, no, you know. And, and it seemed to be belittling and, and trying to make more dramatic of a situation. Turns out Archie wasn't even in the nursery. Piers Morgan even tweeted out, the, basically Archie, he wasn't even in the room and nobody was harmed. Can you imagine the queen whining about having to go to an engagement in this circumstance? Because that was her whole thing. The royal family's mean. They made us go do work because there was maybe possibly a bit of smoke 
<laughs> not an actual fire, it sounds like. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I'm no Sherlock. But even I can figure out, oh, hey, South Africa, okay, their seasons are opposite to ours. So their summer is from October to December. Guess when they were there? It was October 2019, or was it September? I don't know. It was around that time. It was around their summertime 2019. So none of this makes any sense at all. It's just another way to play victim. Here's my opinion. My opinion is she just threw the story in. As, as a way to get more drama out on her podcast. I've gone back to research and try to find any evidence that there actually was a fire. The only thing I found was her own security people kind of corroborating her story. But even that seemed vague. But I'm like, of course they are. They're on the payroll. <laughs> they probably had to sign 50 pieces of paper saying whatever bullshit you come up with, they're going to have to go along with. It just doesn't make any sense. If you ask me, it's another dig at South Africa. It's another way to play a card. And it's another way to try to garner sympathy from people. And I, I'm just over it. I, I think it's disgusting how they treated everybody in South Africa. And the, and just the whole situation. So I'm, I do want to play this section from HG Tutor interview. Again, it's found on his channel. He did such a great job. I really enjoyed my conversation with him. I put part of it up here where I asked him questions. This is from the part where he asked me questions. This is on his channel. So I do encourage you, if you haven't watched it, go back and watch the whole thing. If you want to learn more about me and why I got involved in this, you can find it here. But he actually discussed why he thinks she pulled this crap. And it's interesting and it goes into her narcissism. So I'm going to play this clip for you now. But stick with it because it is interesting. And then he goes into why Harry, because I specifically asked, why does Harry go along with this stuff? He gets into that too. So without further ado, we're going to take a listen to this. Here we go. You, you nicely, you neatly deflected to buy yourself a bit of thinking time, but I'm going to bring you back to <laughs> what annoys you most about this one's wife. All right. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> I, I, how long do you have? I could talk for four hours, but <laughs> well, that would be head. lovely. But if you could yeah. condense it into a couple of minutes, that would be preferable. All right. You're making me do all these tough things today, HG. Uh, you've, got to earn would... your, you've got to earn your corn, Jen. Come on. Now. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I, it's honestly, it's so much about her. I would say it's more than the attention seeking behavior. It's the need for constant admiration, believing that she's superior and, and expects everyone to recognize her as such. Um, yeah. Her inflated self importance. I think she takes advantage of others to achieve what she sets out, you know, her plans, um, her lack of empathy toward everyone. It's she's, I find her very, I mean, this is not groundbreaking, but I find her very manipulative and deceptive. Mm -hmm. I am fascinated. As I mentioned again, it, I tie everything back to Amber Heard and her, how they can lie like that and not, I mean, it, it can be about a small thing. Like we married three days before when clearly they did not marry three days before. Why? I still haven't figured that one out. There's usually I can find. Well, even what if it's it about, oh, uh -huh. it, why that happens is that she operates in her own reality. Now, mm -hmm. sometimes that reality segues with the reality that you understand to be mm -hmm. reality. So, for instance, if you had the misfortune of spending some time with her and you pointed and said, what's that over there? It's a tall thing. It's sort of gray brown and has green things on it. She would go, that's a tree. And you mm -hmm. go, yeah, that's right, a tree. So you both see that similarly. Yes. But when it comes to behavior, she sees behavior through a distortion field of her narcissism, which mm -hmm. causes her to interpret everything through the lens of control and the receipt of fuel. So what happens is when she's having that conversation, her narcissism, if, if you imagine it's an imp on her shoulder, it's whispering, you need to get control, keep control, keep control, keep control. And one way of doing that is to say something that is provocative, to mm -hmm. revise history, to talk about something that might happen in the future but never will. So her narcissism in order to keep control over the person that she was talking to when she was talking about when they got married, 
basically selected a revision of history. Imagine there's this keyboard in front of you with all uh -huh. these different manipulations on it. And at the top of this keyboard, there's a screen saying, keep control. And it keeps flashing, keep control. Sometimes it says, get control. Sometimes it says, nullify control. Mm -hmm. And the narcissism operates this keyboard. And what it does is it selects a manipulation. So she's having this conversation with whoever it is, interviewing her about the, the, the wedding or whatever. And that screen showing, keep control, keep control. So her narcissism selects revise history. So she then says, oh, we were actually married three days before. In that moment, even though the evidence is that, that that wasn't when they got married, she believes it in that moment. And it's not so much about telling the lie. It's about what does it achieve? It enables her to provoke a response which draws fuel and allows her to maintain control. So yeah. sometimes the response of the narcissist is utterly incongruous with what's going on. Mm -hmm. People go, why on earth did they say that? That just doesn't even make sense. Sometimes it's a lot more plausible, but that's what's behind it. So when she tells these lies, you know, for instance, saying that, you know, Archie almost burned to death yes. in that South African uh, heater fire. Uh -huh. Again, that's done because her narcissism is basically saying, quick, think of something that's dramatic so that everybody will react to what you've got to say and they go oh that's awful because that will show that they're under control so basically her narcissism goes oh yeah there was this huge fire you know archie almost got burnt to a crisp or yeah there was this guy who was at the lion king premiere and he told me that everybody in south africa celebrated when i got married in the same way <laughs> as if they did when nelson mandela was released she comes out with these porky pies not because okay. she sits there and thinks what can I say that's a load of crap, but at least people will react to? She honestly believes it because mm -hmm. her narcissism just selects that. So it's a little bit like, imagine Jenna film where there's a lady at home and the intruder bursts in and she falls backwards and she's scrambling to get away. And uh -huh. she's trying to find anything to stop this uh, beast of a man or this monster advancing on her. She, she picks up a pot and throws it at his head. She picks up uh -huh. a poker and hurls it and then her hands find a revolver so she shoots him uh -huh. the narcissism is the same it scrambles for whatever it can find to make sure that it gets that control and that fuel so with her because she's not that an evolved narcissist and it also provides the likes of you and me and countless others great opportunity to ridicule her whilst <laughs> pointing out what it is by saying look at this nonsense that she's coming out with so that's why she does it Thank you for explaining that so clearly to me. It's just, see, again, you're you're fueling my fascination. I think this is so interesting. So could yeah. you tell me why does Harry not say, what are you talking about? Do you believe it's the narcissist's control over him? Two factors with Harry. Mm -hmm. The first is that he is somewhat cerebrally challenged, and therefore it's quite easy to pull the wool over his eyes. Mm -hmm. So with some things, it doesn't even cause him to question it. He's also been indoctrinated. So he's been fed this steady drip by her of this is the way the world is, Harry. And it's basically, yes, mistress, no mistress, three bags full mistress. So he accepts all of that. And there are times where he knows she's talking shit. And there are times where he knows she's out of line. You saw his reaction when she did that disgusting curtsy on their yes. program. He wasn't impressed by that. <laughs> and there are times where he and the occasion when she was on the balcony and he kept telling her to turn around and she wouldn't eat again. So, mm -hmm. but the, the factor is that with certain things, he doesn't say anything because he knows out comes the taser and she applies it to the old pink pods. <laughs> ma many people who are victims of narcissists will tell you, uh -huh. I could see that they were behaving really badly, but it just wasn't worth pointing it out to them because then they would turn on me. And if they were if they were causing a problem elsewhere and leaving me alone, all I wanted was a quiet life. At mm. first, they might point it out. And of course, the narcissist, because that's a threat to the narcissist's control, the narcissist mm. would turn on their spouse and say, what do you think? You, who do you think you are? How dare you criticize me like that? Mm. And we'll give them a hard time. And that unaware victim that doesn't realize they're with a narcissist ultimately thinks for the sake of maintaining the peace, I won't point it out. They can see it, but they won't do anything about it. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Guys, I'm dying to know your thoughts on all this. Tell me everything. 
Are you on the same page as me? Does the cheese stand alone? I'll even give a little tiny bit of grace that, of course, anything surrounding a child would cause you perhaps to overreact. Again, I want to emphasize, I don't believe that's what this is. This is not a mother genuinely concerned for her child. In my opinion, this is somebody who's held on to this nothing. This, oh, there's a little bit of smoke. And I, I, it didn't even register for her to talk about it on Netflix. That to me is pretty telling because she aired everything on Netflix. She didn't talk about it there. So she held on to this tidbit to try to, I don't know, perhaps draw more attention to her podcast or was it invented for her podcast? I'll let you decide that. But uh, again, a huge thank you to HG who gave me permission to use these clips. I appreciate it. I'm asking you kindly, if you feel like going back to watch that interview, it would mean so much to me. Leave a comment, um, honk at him, whatever you want to do. I'm just, I, he took he took the time with me and really um, did a great job on that interview. So I want to make sure that the views reflect how much we love that. So again, thank you guys for everything. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you all so much. And I'm dying to read your thoughts on this. Have the best day. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.